In this video, we will look at the steps to create a KDB streaming process. Streaming for dashboards requires no external framework like PubNub or LightStreamer is required. Instead, streaming support is in KDB itself with KDB Tick. This implementation is found in U.Q, which only uses a few lines of code to create a minimum publish and subscribe pattern powered by KDB. With publishers and subscribers, Publishers advertise topics stored in u.t, like quotes and orders. Subscribers call a function, u.sub, for published topics, like quotes. Additional filters can be applied as part of the subscription, for example a given equity or currency pair. On subscribe, subscribers are registered in a dictionary, u.w, which maps topics to a list of subscriptions. Subscriptions consist of a socket handle and a filter, e.g. a currency pair. Once registered, any external change then uses u.pub function to push updates to a topic. Finally, subscribers can be removed by disconnecting or by calling u.delete. Let's look at this in dashboards. Start your dashboards by running the dash.batch file. Then go into your sample folder to open up our stream.q file in a text editor. We will run our stream as a separate process on its own port, in this case port 6814. We then define a table to publish, in this case to waves. We load our KDB tick process with u.q and then initialize. So our topics are initialized into a streaming table available in u.t. u.w will have a dictionary with waves and no subscribers. Now we need to publish some data. In this example, we use a sine wave function to populate the data. We will create a series of waves with parameters of amplitude, frequency and phase for wave shape. We now have data available for six different waves available for time. We need to publish these rows into our subscription topic waves using the timer function .z.ts to call publish. For every specified interval, there will be a new publish event. Then we set up a snap placeholder for dashboards just to get an idea of what the data is like. Last, we set up a trigger for the timer function. So here we're using 60 milliseconds, which is equivalent to 60 frames per second. So let's visualize this screen. We start by dragging the chart GL component into our workspace. Now we can resize it to fit the screen. And then we'll go into a data source. Create a new data source. Call this stream. And then we have to set up our connection to stream. So this is again on port 6814. So it's on localhost. And then we're going to check into our streaming, which will have our waves example ready for us to select. Uh, the date is initially keyed by row number, but we want to show it over time. So we can switch that, and there we have it. Our data coming in at 60 frames per second. So what can we do next? When the dashboard loads, we really don't want the values to start filling in right from the beginning. So to solve this, we'll create a buffer. Now, ring buffer allows us the way to effectively cache data up to a predetermined size. This then loops around and refills those values. We will give the ring buffer a size of 20,000 values. With the ring buffer established, we now have a new stream generation function, which saves the new record to the buffer before returning it. The timer function is updated to now call the wave stream waves gen to keep a buffered version of the last record. Finally, our updated snap function reads from the buffer stream.waves using the location stream.i of the last index item. So it takes the most recent snapshot of our buffer to use in our chart. We can now see in our chart that we have a complete view of our data with new prices streaming in to replace the old values. Thank you for watching.